All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our April webinar. And uh, as the title implies, I'm just taking the opportunity here with uh, the staff at Linux Foundation Public Health uh, to set up a virtual open house. We thought it'd be a great opportunity with everything going on in the course of the pandemic and over the last 24 months uh, to kind of summarize, uh, you, you know, a lot of our achievements and what we have worked on and to be able to give everyone a chance to see the things that we have going forward into the future. Uh, we as a team have a great deal of excitement around a lot of the uh, uh, things that we have planned and we think we have a lot to be able to share and was look forward to, uh, to providing you just an overview today as well as additional details if you're not a member of Linux Foundation Public Health and would be interested in joining us, uh, how you could do so as well. My name is Jim St. Clair. I'm the executive director of Linux Foundation Public Health, I'm joined with my team today and looking forward to be able to, uh, to go over this with you. Just to give a little bit of background, we were founded in summer of 2020 with an initial focus, rightfully so, on open source response uh, for the pandemic and what ways that uh, Linux Foundation membership could collaborate to develop open source tools to support uh, exposure notification, COVID credentials, etc. And we'll touch a, a bit more upon this uh, within our slides. But I'd say one of our important things has been our relationship with public health authorities uh, and expanding into other areas of healthcare delivery. And as the slides in our, our discussion will reflect, uh, we're starting to move into other areas of digital public goods um, and health IT and open source and ways to build upon that collaboration for, for social impact. For those who aren't familiar, the Linux Foundation is really much more than just the Linux operating system. Uh, we have uh, 2,000 plus members, 40 plus countries, 100% of Fortune 100 uh, tech and telecom members that have all been strong supporters. And as you can see from that, what is now technically a partial list of uh, different projects and activities, uh, Linux Foundation Public Health falls more into that category of an industry sector facing type activity that we've been building in the last couple of years exemplified by things you can see there around energy, film, automotive, et cetera, where we begin to develop uh, both organic uh, uh, open source pro uh, software project initiatives uh, within Linux Foundation Public Health, and then uh, relate that to other activities that may be going on, say in networking or edge and IoT, uh, web standards, et cetera, that can be brought in and, uh, and support Linux Foundation Public Health in open source initiatives for healthcare, collaboratively speaking. Some of you may have had a chance to see our collaborative webinar last month, uh, specifically dealing with AI cybersecurity and healthcare done in partnership with LFAI. Uh, that's obviously, I think, a great example where we see some opportunities to collaborate with other Linux Foundation projects and advance open source uh, healthcare related activities. Our mission is all about building an ecosystem around open source projects. Uh, we help establish and uh, maintain the governance and membership collaboratively and in a consensus driven manner with, with our members, um, uh, assisting with the development process, the technical decision making, uh, providing support to the infrastructure, which then supports the ecosystem development, as well as very specific intellectual property management. Uh, as a membership association developing an open source software under open source licenses, uh, we uh, uh, regard the issues of antitrust and intellectual property protections very seriously. Uh, that is at the heart of everything that we have done as an organization uh, and continue to do, which of course provides that um, uh, non-competitive open environment for open source contributions that's so important. This kind of lays out all of those areas uh, that as an ecosystem, we can support and sustain that are all more important uh, or all important as part of uh, a developing ongoing mature effort to support uh, an open source uh, life cycle for any given project or software tools that we're working on collectively as a group. Um, and I think some of the things to really call out that are important here as well that haven't been mentioned is you know, marketing, let's, uh, there, are, there are opportunities to develop open source platforms that in many cases never necessarily succeed as much as they possibly could uh, because there hasn't been uh, an opportunity or an infrastructure or a voice to be able to uh, make organizations aware of it, promote sustainability and, and cultivate the life cycle for that opportunity. And of course, as things become more mature, that then translates into formal training programs for those open source licenses, excuse me, open source products. 
uh, and potentially certification as we see in things like Kubernetes and security and others that we already do in, in Linux Foundation. It's been a thrill to work with all of these members so far since, uh, since last fall when I came on board. Uh, and we have been working together collaboratively to define new areas for open source development and open source projects and tools that will benefit public health and digital health and digital public goods. Uh, and in terms of associate members, uh, we're actually growing very rapidly by adding additional academic medical centers, um, health information networks and others. And I'll touch upon that in a couple of slides as well when we start discussing the new membership. Uh, even these numbers, I think, will have to be updated, but thrilled that uh, over the course of the last two years, uh, we have this many members in our in our open Slack community, and I think we've added a significant number since then. Uh, we've worked uh, closely with over 23 U.S. states and territories in 26 countries, and as the slides will reflect, we're also expanding into uh, non-governmental organizations, um, other uh, global health organizations such as the WHO, UNDP, and others. Uh, and uh, over the course of our response to COVID, as I mentioned, we have these three specific products that all have a very robust life cycle and now begin to expand into other project areas uh, too. Uh, just to, to emphasize, you know, the members of the Linux Foundation Public Health, just like other Linux Foundation projects, really help set the direction as to where they go uh, and, uh, and what areas we work on. Just like all other projects, we have both governing board activities that set the governance and the strategy for the organization and a technical advisory committee that uh, works to build consensus around what new projects to take on, how those projects are staffed, managed, organized, etc. Uh, and then lastly, an outreach committee and other committees, which I'll touch upon, that uh, uh, help collaborate across the, uh, the industry for consistent messaging on what we're working on, what Linux Foundation is working on and, and areas that uh, we're moving next. Specific to our work with public health authorities, it's been a pleasure to be able to leverage our collaboration internally to LFPH to provide advising and, and, um, and uh, PR support, community building expertise, community learning, all as part with public health authorities. We'll touch again upon our public health advisory council, the disease investigative to, uh, technology collaborative that we have, um, as well as other partnerships we're building with organizations such as ASTO, uh, AHPA, uh, um, and internationally as well, uh, that all help um, build a message collaboratively with public health authorities around not only what we're doing specifically in terms of open source projects, but how those projects fit into strategies for disease response, epidemiology, digital health, inclusiveness, diversity, et cetera. So just to emphasize, you know, why organizations join the Linux Foundation and LF Public Health specifically, there's a market opportunity around public health IT infrastructure, which I would offer to you, I have gained a lot more exposure to than I even had before, especially on the international front when it comes to these topics of digital public goods, um, supporting new ways that we have been reopening the economy with new tools for pandemic management and disease investigative and response contract tra contact tracing, um, uh, et cetera, uh, that have all been beneficial over the last 18 months. And then of course, just the positive public feedback is being a technology leader who can work in a collaborative coalition driven model for privacy protecting solutions for disease response, for health IT inclusiveness, for global impact, et cetera. And there are development opportunities for the whole team of participants amongst LFPH both inculcating and developing open source best practices, especially as they align to health IT standards and health data standards, opportunities for global collaboration between activities that may be specific to say a US public health authority in conjunction with a public health authority in the EU or in the APAC region, which is tremendous. And then lastly, of course, uh, being involved with our training activities and uh, other open source activities that we're doing and, and, uh, and training and certification programs that Linux Foundation offers and building new ones to be able to build upon open source health IT and digital public goods and, and expand uh, knowledge and understanding that way. This is just kind of a graphic to summarize a bit of what I've talked about in terms of our organizational structure. As you can see, the technical advisory committee I touched upon, the governing board, our public health advisory council, uh, any one of, of uh, a number of hosted projects that we have in LFPH 
input from academic and research institutions, which will be trying to focus more into a standalone academic medical center consortium going forward in 2022. And then other Linux Foundation staff and projects that we uh, we have an opportunity to collaborate with to, to be able to build out and execute these projects going forward. So that uh, together pulls together this ecosystem you can see for all these groups uh, uh, that I have mentioned that we've touched upon. Uh, and our goal going forward from here is to continue to strengthen this ecosystem through participation, new project initiation, open source lifecycle management and contributions to where open source can play a role as part of digital health and health IT. I mentioned before, and I'll touch upon just, you know, our success to date, uh, working with our, our uh, uh, membership, with, or excuse me, our, our partnership and, and member Nearform uh, for the COVID Green as part of Ireland's specific response. Um, Herald was developed in conjunction with EMware with as part of the UK's response. Uh, and it's also been exciting to see uh, new opportunities for steering each of these existing products into new areas. Herald, for instance, is built upon a, um, a Bluetooth architecture that also has an opportunity for uh, wayfinding, for uh, patient guidance within facilities that we're looking as perhaps the next thing beyond just the exposure notification development work that we did and has some exciting potentials to be built uh, into new directions. Additionally, we have done work around COVID credentials, which is continuing to grow with our work around GCCN. I'll talk about that in another slide as well. Uh, but this is recognizing the fact that uh, as uh, countries have adopted new ways to uh, prove and attest to vaccination status and vaccination credentials, the ability to use those interoperably between organizations and between border checkpoints um, is becoming more and more of a consideration. More importantly, it kind of lays the groundwork for how other forms of, of medical information can be shared um, from border point to border point, uh, as well as just share that uh, medical information and health information uh, as part of your travels for, uh, uh, for the sake of, of global information and health information sharing. We also created and now been moving into an independent initiative, the COVID Credentials Initiative, CCI. Uh, that will be a, that is uh, moving into a standalone type organization that ties together standards development works between the W3C, the Decentralized Identity Foundation, IEEE, Trust Over IP Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation, in other words, other activities going on around identity and identity standards within the Linux Foundation, specifically focused around these aspects for, for COVID credentials. Uh, and most importantly, embodying some of the work being done over there about self uh, selective disclosure. Um, differential privacy and privacy preserving architecture and building those into health data standards for health information sharing as part of both COVID response as well as other uh, epidemiological or health information exchange uh, needs. And that's leading up to the Global COVID Certificate Network or GCCN. Uh, we're very pleased to be working with uh, UNDP and WHO uh, in enabling this as a, as a pilot coming up that will help build this certificate ecosystem I've been referring to and the concept of a trust registry network, which I really feel will lay the groundwork for looking into new architectural models for how credentials are being shared, specifically leveraging PKI standards and traditional PKI infrastructures with the new standards under DIFF and TYP and W3C for verifiable credentials and selective disclosure and decentralized identity management uh, and, and creating a compatible ecosystem. So those environments will work going forward in the future for things like zero trust architecture. And we'll touch upon that again when we start talking about medical devices and, and IoT security as well. As I mentioned, we have a public health advisory council, which works closely with our technical advisory committee and helps drive the roadmap for projects to be given priority. Uh, we've also created the Disease Investigative Technology Collaborative, focused at state level discussions on public health and epidemiological topics and looking at ways that states can implement different technologies. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, uh, venue that is on NATRA attribution with independent participation with both US and international public health authorities. Uh, and looking for new ways to address new topics um, beyond immediate pandemic priorities that touch upon things such as social determinants of health, um, other uh, disease areas and investigative areas that need to be addressed um, uh, that are also considerations beyond, of course, just COVID. 
So that's where we have been going and the things we're doing. And now let's talk about uh, what we see in 2022 and going forward and beyond. First of all, I'm very pleased to announce that as one of our other areas of focus, we'll be putting together a Veterans Health Advisory Committee, speaking personally as a veteran and recognizing over the last couple of years, um, really the last six or seven to, to eight that I've been involved in projects involving veteran health. It's a unique community facing uh, unique opportunities for digital health uh, and sharing of health information. And we want to be able to be involved in that, uh, especially recognizing opportunities for open source where the VA has played a significant role uh, over the decades with its open source electronic healthcare record systems and other considerations for open source. Uh, so we'll be moving forward with a committee such as this that uh, hopefully will involve both leadership from the VA as well as participation and partnership with uh, our existing LFPH member, Equidium Health, the Dixon VA Center, and other VA stakeholders to be able to guide it uh, as a specific activity similar to what we did with the Public Health Authority, but specific to VA, uh, to veterans health needs. Just to quickly uh, capture some of the new project efforts that we have percolating, uh, we're looking at an open source public health data mesh uh, concept that is built on what we've learned in participating with our public health advisory council around the, the ability to share and establish interoperability for public health data and how we use that public health data, both from an epidemiological standpoint, uh, as well as for other aspects of public health and population health, where ourselves, as well as many other significant uh, academic organizations in the US and others recognize that public health data infrastructure is something that needs to be addressed in a post pandemic world, and most specifically how open source solutions to be brought to do that. I mentioned GCCN and that's in the process of being championed by UNDP and support from WHO. Uh, we're working on a project with uh, the state of Florida and Florida State University on a maternal mental health uh, data directory. Uh, we're looking at open source consent utilities, which are specifically designed to be able to facilitate um, better models and process flows for individuals to grant consent to their health information, and most importantly, social determinants of health information, things that may involve um, state, uh, state agencies or community-based organizations that factor into considerations for their clinical care uh, and how we improve the data exchange for that being done through things like HL7 and other international health data standards and build models of consent into that data sharing. Uh, and then also a virtual health platform, which is uh, drawing upon the lessons that we have learned and the work that has been done in things such as Kubernetes and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and carrying that over to new virtual techniques for managing health data. Uh, we're also looking at possible opportunities uh, for Ukrainian refugee support for open source EHRs, uh, developing something that we may call Linux for Health, um, working in partnership with the University of Rochester Medical Center for their SDOH so Social Determinants of Health Navigator, uh, working on an open source patient engagement tool with the Dell Medical School at the University of Texas, uh, and pursuing some new development work in digital twins for patients. And I'll touch upon digital twins and expand upon that a bit more in an upcoming slide. One of the things that uh, I've really been pleased to be able to get us involved with uh, and as a team start uh, directing our efforts through our membership is in this promotion of digital public goods. Digital public goods are defined as open source software, uh, open data, uh, uh, open standards and, and other models that adhere to various laws and best practices, which are really championed through the Digital Public Goods Alliance. And the, the link is provided in the presentation. Uh, they have established a framework for what are to be defined as digital public goods, which is a natural fit with that model that I showed you earlier for how the Linux Foundation and LFPH curates and maintains open source software. So we're building partnerships with the DPGA, UNDP, um, the uh, uh, newly formed uh, uh, Open Source Program Office for the WHO, Open HIE, and PATH uh, to be able to assist in cultivating and developing and promoting those digital public goods going forward. Digital twins, very excited about this, and I touched upon it before with regards to the University of Miami. Um, biomedical research and bioinformatics is continuing to advance in new ways around data science, software development, and the like. And digital twins are part of that consideration and, and next, uh, next frontier for biomedical research. 
Digital twins are a virtual emulation of a physical entity, such as device, people, processes, and systems. In the many other industries so far, there has been tremendous advances in digital twins. Digital twins set up around um, engine architecture, digital twins of business process, excuse me, of building processes, uh, manufacturing lines involving IoT devices and the like. And now technology is starting to move into healthcare, biomedical research, and bioinformatics about the concepts of how digital twins could be representations of living systems as well. That may be a digital twin specifically around the cardiovascular system or around the heart, something that uh, uh, some companies have done so far. Or they may be broader digital twin models around the whole patient itself or a system of system view of more than one digital twin working together as part of a, uh, of a healthcare system. Um, and as mentioned, the University of Miami recently launched a new initiative for digital twins, and we're talking to them about laying the framework and, uh, and components as open source that would be the core to that, embodying things like AI and ML, edge computing and edge networking, cloud computing and other algorithms that are built in and serve as an open source, transparent and accountable uh, AI ML model for digital twins that could be uh, could be leveraged in any number of research efforts, commercializations, or product structures to advance digital twins into healthcare in the future. Additionally, we're now getting involved with open source digital therapeutics. Very exciting opportunity again here with the University of Rochester, where uh, AR uh, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality applications mobile apps and games can be used as digital therapeutics for specific treatment regimens. Um, uh, Linux Foundation has uh, uh, outstanding efforts developing in the Open 3D Foundation and other work in open gaming engines, uh, open AR and VR capabilities that potentially combine together with guidance from the University of Rochester and other medical centers uh, can lay the groundworks for um, um, evidence-based, clinically evaluated digital therapeutic solutions. So very excited to see how that develops. Very preliminary, but uh, offers a great deal of promise for new initiatives going forward. And then one more dimension is the evolving world of medical device security and something called software bill of materials or SBOMs. Uh, SBOMs are formable, formal machine readable metadata used to be able to identify uh, components and architectures and medical devices, as well as other devices and industrial control systems, uh, and help guide information about potential software vulnerabilities that come up. Um, the Open Source Security Foundation has led the way in a lot of SBOM work being done across the board, and this was driven specifically by a President's Executive Order in Cybersecurity last year, of which healthcare has been looking at various ways to incorporate this as part of medical device security. And LFPH is working in cooperation with OpenSSF, to the Open Software, uh, Open Software Security Foundation, uh, to be able to promote and implement these specifically in medical devices and in healthcare. And we're also looking to the future around the Internet of Medical Things, the uh, implications of zero trust architecture and decentralized identity to be able to offer greater security and privacy, not only for this generation of medical devices, but where medical devices are going to evolve in the future to incorporate things such as wearables and edge computing and applications of AI and ML. Just to recap that discussion around new memberships, we're very excited to be able to welcome the Michigan Health Information Network uh, Interoperability Institute, uh, Florida State University, University of Rochester and Dell Medical School as part of that new initiative into an academic medical center consortium, uh, University of Miami and recently talking with the Ontario Brain Institute, again with those applications around um, um, decentralized clinical trials uh, and digital twin applications for, for neuroscience. Uh, so we think that's going to be an exciting potential to work in the academic area going forward uh, and develop some of these new technologies under an open source uh, sort of consensus driven model. So most importantly, what does that all mean? If you're excited about what you see and what we've been presenting here today, uh, please go to lfph.io and you can click on the membership link. Uh, consider what your appropriate membership level is. You can always schedule a follow up conversation with us. Uh, or learn more about it from the LFPH website uh, and be happy to uh, uh, follow up with you personally or a member of the team uh, to discuss further what opportunities there are for open source uh, development uh, and explore ways that you can contribute to what we're doing for the future of digital health.
as always, look forward to the opportunity to talk with folks. My uh, director of programs, Jenny, will be back uh, here in the summertime from her maternity leave, uh, and we will be excited to explore new opportunities for your participation. That is what I have for today, and I'd be thrilled to take any questions or comments uh, uh, and discuss more with you about ways to collaborate.